All right, everyone, this is the corner that I'm going to install the television on. So I went ahead and removed, I cut out those spring strips, still got to cut out that corner piece there. And I went ahead and went down to the home store and bought a 2x4 foot hardwood piece of plywood. Not regular um, half inch plywood, but the uh, hardwood version. And uh, it doesn't flex as much and it's already pre-finished. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and place it up here, throw it across there. Find and mark all the studs, all the 1x2s that are in there hidden somewhere because if I were to try to install it onto this, there's no way it's going to support it. It's it's eighth inch at best. So I'm going to put the board on there, mark the spots where it's at, drill into the studs in the back in multiple places wherever I can put it all along. And then I will go ahead and mount my mount on that board and then my TV. Uh, you can't trust a stud finder because I have ran into boards that you got one by twos and then they connected them to a two by two and uh, they're not even straight, you know, up and down. They're going off to the sides. Uh, I've taken these panels off on, on some of these and from factory, they're just, they're, they're just very poorly built. Is, is all I can say so so you need to find out where they are so made a hole here I can feel that there's one here but if you use a stud finder I, see I cut this hole here because apparently there's a big board that goes across this whole area and it goes down as well I'm following it um, same thing over here this stuff's so thin I just use a utility knife and I cut around and just find where they're at wherever they may be but there seems to be even a lot in here and a lot down here so what I've been doing is um, like I said a stud finder doesn't work very good because the studs are everywhere and they're odd sizes and it just you need to make sure you get a good bite so I use a utility knife a pencil and I got this with the sharp edge on it. Uh, you can also get some pliers and, and a small little nail and grab onto the end of that and just use it as a probe as well. And Or a drill. You can have a drill with like an eighth inch bit. Drill around and see what you can feel. So what I do is I just I poke, poke around and see if I can find where it's at. But as you can see here I know where the end the edge of it is which is right here so you'd think you know one and a half or three quarters or whatever but as I'm poking it just keeps going so I cut open and I see that there's something solid here that goes all the way across stops around here nothing 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 and then from here we have something that goes across here so you need to make sure you find them where they go and that they go straight up so the next thing I did is I got a rough center of where I think I'm gonna be and I drew my line up there and rough center down here, rough center, rough center everywhere. So when I lay my board over this, when I lay it over this right now, I'll go ahead and put a line on my board on the top and on the bottom of the board. And I will know exactly where my center line is so that when I, I can pre-drill and find those studs. So now I've gone ahead and overlaid the board on there where it's gonna be. And as you can see there, I went ahead and marked the spot where, where the line's going to go down to the other line. And that way I can pre-drill this, put a few of them and really get a good bite with this onto that wall. As you can see here, I already took a router to it, got a nice round edge on it because you don't want to leave sharp edges if you don't have a router just grab some sandpaper like one of those sandpaper sponges and just take off at least the edge because I've had them bite me before and they cut you pretty good so so far so good now I'm just gonna figure out where the 
find out where the electrical hole needs to be there so I can cut that out so I can bring out that receptacle. Then after it's uh, all said and done, bolt it down, screw down, I'll go ahead and uh, paint it as well and make it look real good. All right, you guys, there you have it. It's up there. Looks good. Another thing I wanted to point out, if yours doesn't have this already, it'd be good to put some of these edges because th these are extra support for this. Quarter inch, extra support, extra support all the way down to the floor. Just makes the mount that much stronger and sturdier. But so far it's looking good. All right, just installed the uh, brackets on the back of the television. Went ahead and measured the, uh, the width and the length. And then I took another measurement from the top of the TV to where it fits on on these hooks right here, which is uh, right around 12 and a half, 13. As you can see, I went ahead and uh, centered up everything using some masking tape. Uh, gave myself some clearance up on the roof here of a couple inches and then measured down the uh, 13 inches. That way we know that once we put this TV on, it'll be centered from left to right and it'll give us a small space at the top and at the bottom spaced out slightly and it's going to fit right on because that bracket isn't exactly, well, it's not in the middle of the TV, so you're going to have to compensate for it and do some measuring and see where you're going to want it. Went ahead and did the best I could to line it up with, with the 1x2 studs that are behind these walls, which is nice because they give you a whole bunch of different mounting holes so you can mount it to whatever you think, you know. So uh, with this thick board, I would have been just fine, but I figured I might as well try to hit one of these studs while I'm at it, pre-drilling and uh, hope for the best just to get extra strength and as you as you can see here i'm step drilling from small to the one i'm i'm using the final one and i'm going slow just to make sure that uh, it doesn't tear it all up you'll get a much cleaner hole for for your bolts to grab onto if you step them another thing i forgot to mention is once you have it all centered up taped up so you can do your marks I like to start off with one hole. In my case, I started off with this one. Then I went ahead and tightened it up uh, by hand. These you want to do by hand. Then I went ahead and put my level up there. And then I brought it up to where it uh, was nice and level with one hand and with the other. Tightened that up. And I went ahead and drew my marks to where I needed to, uh, to drill. But uh, it's very important that your rig is level, trailer, whatever you're doing it on, motorhome, travel trailer, fifth wheel, whatever. Because once you level this, then you know everything will be level. So it's very important because if you do not level your rig first or your trailer, then once you do, this thing's gonna be crooked. So very important to keep your, whatever you're installing it in level as well. All right, there it is. Already hand tightened down, rechecked it and we're level. So now it's time to bring the TV over. <clears throat> All right, you guys, so there it is. I ended up moving it. <clears throat> I don't know if you can tell there with the two holes that are left there, but uh, once I set the TV on there and it was, you know, nice and straight and everything was centered, I noticed that uh, from right to left, the movement that I have available, I had some to the left, but I didn't have any to the right because the TV won't, the way it was set up, with it being centered right off the bat, it left half of the play that that stand had not usable in it, so you, so, so you couldn't, it was just wasted. So I <clears throat> moved it over to the left so that I can, so once I put it on there, move it all the way to the right, it's centered where it's supposed to be, where it was before, the TV will be. But if I need that play to the left, I have twice as much to go to the left. And I'll show you guys towards the end what that'll look like. All right, you guys, so there you can see 
the TV is uh, mounted and centered. And just for you to visualize, that TV is all the way to the right hand side on that bracket. And I got the spacing that I want on top and to the side there so it's not too close to the wall. That is all the way to the right. Now I'm going to show you what I mean and why I moved it. And this is why I did it. Whenever I'm going to be parked for at least a week, I'll go ahead and grab the TV with both arms, both hands, and I'll slide the thing over carefully till it stops. And this is where it stops. So when we're laying down in bed, uh, both of us can stare at the TV without having to turn our heads. It gives us a great angle to, to view. That is why I did the mount in that particular uh, configuration there. And once we're done, I just pick it up, slide it over, and it's where I wanted it to be to begin with, stored out of the way. Uh, the reason I didn't go with an RV mount is because those things are 40 pounds and, and more weight-wise, which in my case is more than my TV weighs. But that uh, board that I put up there is more than capable of, of being able to handle something like that. So you can apply this to any part of the mobile home of your RV, motorhome, whatever, uh, to put a, you know, a, a good place to mount your mount to. So this can be applied throughout the place. Uh, for this particular application, I didn't need anything more than just a basic TV mount. It was like $12.99 on Amazon, and uh, it's enough to do it. Don't, don't need anything else, and it works for me. But like I said, you can, you can use this backing to, to mount a TV and whichever mount you choose to anywhere, and it'll give you something much better to mount to than just the paper-thin walls that these come with. Also, I'd like to point out that little surge protector there. It's a flush mount rocket fish two outlet surge protector. It's enough to protect the TV and another uh, electronic device as well. I uh, got that at Best Buy. Pretty neat little gadget, but I uh, hope this was helpful. Worked for me, hopefully it'll work for you or give you some ideas as to how to adapt it in your project.